so much about you, Mr. Stewart. Yeah, all good, I hope. Oh, but of course. <laughs> I always tell Marilyn, if you can't say something nice about someone, don't say anything at all. Yeah, well, you can't go wrong with that, can you? Uh, I believe you met my wife yesterday. Ailsa? Oh, yes, lovely person. Tell me, Mr. Stewart, do you have any salmon? Uh, yeah, yeah, red or pink. We like it, you know. I always gave Marilyn salmon when she was a child. In fact, I always saw to it that she had the best. Well, Auntie, why don't you just choose whatever you'd like? Well, Mr. Stewart, do you have the smoke variety? Yep, you're in luck. It came in this morning. Oh, goody. Now, Marilyn, I want some of that English tea up there, too. I'm not putting up with tea bags for anyone. She's got nice, expensive taste, the old girl. I hope she's throwing a few bob into the kitty. I won't hold my breath. How long she is for? Yeah. Who knows? Marilyn thinks it's rude to ask. I can't stand being in the same room with her. Well, why don't you say something? I can't. Marilyn thinks she's wonderful. <laughs> That'd be a first, wouldn't it? You having to hold your tongue? Oh, it's not funny. I tell you, if it gets any worse, Sam and I are moving out. Oh, come on, Bobby. That's taking things a bit I'm far. I'm serious. Either she pulls a fat head in, or Sam and I are packing our bags. You never hurt your back at all, did you? But, but I just spilled tea. I... You made up all of this, didn't you? No. You used me just so you could live in my house? I believed you, Honey Jean. You're a liar. I can't believe you lied to me. To all of us. Now Bobby and Sam have moved out. Everything's such a mess. How could you do this? I was frightened. Frightened? Of what? Well, I knew that Bobby wanted me out of here, and where was I to go? Daphne didn't want to share with me anymore. No, it's all right for Bobby. <laughs> she has her youth and a good income and a father who's willing to take her in. That doesn't mean you had to lie to me. Oh, yes, but look at the way it's turned out this way. It's all for the best. At least now we all have a roof over our heads. Still, what you did wasn't right. Oh, think how much fun we can have living together again. Remember the good times we used to have? Well, what about Bobby and Sam? We used to have good times together, too. Oh, listen to yourself. Anyone would think you're never going to see them again. They can still visit. Perhaps in a few days, when all this has settled down, we can invite them over for dinner. Well, now that Bobby isn't living here, perhaps we can be friends. Marilyn? I'm going out. Where are you going? I don't know. To think about things. You sure there's nothing I can help you with? No, it's almost ready. Oh, you could set the table, though. But only two places. Nick phoned to say that he's having dinner with Bobby and Sam. Well, what are we having? Ah, your favourite. Tomato and rice soup, followed by homemade sausage rolls. Look. Oh, they look great. <laughs> well, they are your favourites, aren't they? Well, well, they used to be when I was ten. Oh, dear. You've outgrown them. Here I was thinking that I could please you, that you might begin to see that it could be fun living with me again. Look, Auntie Jean, I know what you're trying to do, but I can't let you stay. You're throwing me out? No, I'm just asking you to leave like you were originally supposed to do. I've got other people's feelings to consider here. What, you mean Bobby and Sam? But they're, they're already settled in with Bobby's father. You don't have to worry about them. Yes, but it's not fair. You never even hurt your back in the first place. You should have been the person that moved out, not them. Oh, well, they've already gone, so why fuss about it now? If you're worried about where you're going to live, I've already thought of something. There's a church group in the city that organise housing, and I thought that in the morning we could call them and discuss... That's right, Jean Chambers. Well, she should be arriving sometime this afternoon. Oh, look, I'm sure she's looking forward to meeting you too. <laughs> yes, all right then. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, Auntie Jean, those people sound lovely. I'm sure all your worries are over. You think so? <laughs> I've heard about these so-called charitable organisations. All they're good for is a lumpy mattress and watery soup. Honey, Jean, please, you're making it sound like something out of Oliver Twist. I'm sure it's not that bad. Well, you're not the one who's going to have to live there. Look, Honey Jean, why don't you just try keeping an open mind about it? You know, I mean, it's going to be great fun. You'll be with people your own age. You'll be eating three good meals a day. It'll be 
It'd be wonderful. I doubt it. Well, suit yourself. I'm going to go down and buy you some smoked salmon. I'll make you some nice sandwiches to have on the bus trip down. Oh, that'll be nice, considering it'll probably be the last decent meal I'll have for some time. Annie Jean, don't you think you're taking this a little bit far? No, my dear, I don't. Hi, Matt. Oh, hi. You're a bit early, aren't you? Oh, that doesn't matter, does it? No, no. no well, no. she has gone, hasn't she? No, she hasn't. Look, we'll come back in a couple of hours. Come on. Oh, no, dear. I think it's only fitting that you should be here to see me go. I'm not here to gloat, if that's what you mean, Jean. Um, Sam, why don't you go to your room and start putting your things away? <laughs> well, it is a little early, but I think I'll go down to the bus stop. No point in staying here where I'm not welcome. Look, Auntie Jean, you were only ever supposed to be here for a holiday. It, it was never meant to be permanent. No, of course not. I only raised you for 15 years, made sure that you had the best of everything. I don't know why I should think that that counts for anything. Auntie Jean. What is it they say? There's nothing so painful as an ungrateful child? Something like that. Well, I think that's a little unfair, isn't it? I mean, Marilyn's hardly throwing you out onto the street. From what I hear, she's arranged some quite suitable accommodation for you in the city. Uh, suitable for what? You haven't seen this accommodation and neither has Marilyn. For all we know, it could be suitable only for pigs. Well, Annie Jean, if you're unhappy with it, then I'll find something else. And how am I supposed to afford something else? I'm hardly made of money. Well, there are plenty of cheap share places around. And what's wrong with right here? Oh, Marilyn, I never thought I raised you to be so selfish. <laughs> Must be in your blood. Your mother was no better. Oh, what an awful thing to say. Oh, perhaps. But true. If I hadn't been saddled with raising you, I just might have been able to make a decent life for myself. What do you mean, saddled with raising me? It's not my mother's fault she died. Oh, no, dear. You've got it all wrong. Heather didn't die. She just simply couldn't be bothered with you. That's why she dumped you in the children's home. <laughs> she wasn't even married at the time. She's lying, Maz. Oh, am I? Then why did you wait till now to tell her? Because I don't think she needs protecting any longer. What goes around comes around, as they say. Marilyn, don't believe it. She's only trying to get at you. Oh, Bobby, what if she's not lying? What if my mother is alive? 